I might as well. Start out like this. Uh, the hockey, hockey world was today. Oh my lord! The hockey world today, uh, on Friday, August thirtieth, was shocked by the news and announcement of Johnny and Matthew Goudreau being unfortunately killed via via drunk driver. Uh, before we get into this reaction video, I just wanted to say I want to send my condolences to the Goudreau family. Uh, obviously, the hockey world also has sent their condolences with, uh, to the uh, Goudreau family. Dude, I'm I'm kind of choking up from this. Obviously, I didn't know Johnny or Matthew Goudreau. Uh, it was one of those things, something that, you know, from what I've heard, he's been one of the best and nicest guys on and off the ice. Uh, and it is super unfortunate that his life had to be cut short via... Uh, drunk driving accident so i can't even really say this video is dedicated to him it's not well, it can be but it uh it's interesting knowing that some guy who you've never met but you still kind of look up to even though he's not a toronto maple leaf even though he's not on the team that i cheer for even though that he's someone i've never met Having him just be gone in an instant, it, it really makes you think. Uh, so, to the Goudreau family, don't think any of you will ever see this. I send my condolences to you. Um, to the hockey world, I, I, I'm as, in as the same amount of shock as you guys are. And to the... NHL uh, I hope that this season can be really dedicated in memory of him and his brother uh, and yeah so the original video today was actually supposed to be a reaction of the deep dive on NHL 25 uh, and EA did the right and responsible thing uh, and delaying it so Today we're gonna to be looking at twenty things you didn't know about the uh, didn't know about the NHL by Face Off. So before we get into that, subscribe. I don't even want to say subscribe; it doesn't even feel right. Um, just thank you, Johnny, for hockey memories, and uh, we hope that the family can get justice for this tragedy. Now on to uh, on to the video. So, and it, 20 things you didn't know about the NHL by face-off. Uh, probably won't know about this, but this thumbnail seems very, very, very... What's the word I'm looking for? Clickbaity. So, let's get into it. Uh, eh, there's an ad. From hockey arenas going into apocalypse mode, to fans throwing real-life animals onto the ice, these are 20 things you didn't know about the NHL. I bet you had no idea. Okay, I'm actually genuinely curious on who this video is made for. If this is made for people who um, didn't know anything about hockey, okay. This is made for hockey fans. Okay, <laughs> that even let's be interested here. a real-life NHL game with this crazy loophole. It allowed an insurance salesman, accountant, and a Zamboni driver to play. So each yeah, team only e has two rule. goalies, it's not, right? If both get injured, they actually have an emergency goalie. This is someone in the crowd who gets free tickets to every home game and must be there on call in the unlikely event that both do get injured. Each team is required to keep a list of local non-professional goalies. And last season, this happened with the Anaheim Ducks. 27-year-old Tom Hodges, who was an insurance salesman by day, was asked to step in after after both starting goalies were injured. And we do not know what happened to Anthony Stolarz. I don't know when. This video was three Thomas months ago, so it was from last. Has been the emergency the 20, 20, three, 24 since 2019. season. Dude, E-Bugs can have so many cool moments. Back for Haskinen. Robertson, one-timer, score! And so many bad moments. It looked like it clipped something. Dude, Still, that's it's so super tough. impressive that even he that's got actually out there so and was tough. able to help. And his reaction to playing was priceless. How are you feeling? Well, uh, a little out of breath, but uh, I'm doing all right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you looked a little pale between the periods. Can you tell us what was going through your mind when you found out you'd be starting the third? Yeah, well, I was. Uh... Dude, what would your reaction be? I would be horrified. 
uh, I'd be horrified. Be like, oh yeah, you're going to be goalie in an NHL game. <laughs> I, w- I would be horrified. There's a little touch and go there. We weren't exactly sure. I just had uh, had somebody come in and say, you know, Stolze uh, could barely walk and that I was going to have to throw my jersey on. So, um, it would be so cool, though. It would be such I've a cool... Life, uh, but I'm, uh, I'm glad cool, I didn't embarrass myself cool too much out there. There have been multiple other emergency goalies who had more success, like David Ayers and Scott Foster. Yeah, it's okay Ayers, to make mistakes you when you're an emergency goalie, but not if you're prepping the Stanley Cup. Every year when oh, a team wins know the Stanley Cup, all the players, coaches, and owners are hand-engraved on it. But I guess there's been some real dumbasses engraving it. There are some out-of-pocket misspellings. Jacques Plante won the cup in five back-to-back seasons, and his name was spelled differently every time. Names are one thing, but team names? Surely they know how to spell those. They... But no. The Boston Bruins were literally spelled with two Q's. Ba- the Q's Q and... <laughs> Bootskin Bruin. That's Bruins. crazy. The Islanders were spelled the New York Bruce Islanders. And Islanders. The were spelled Toronto Maple Leafs. The funniest of all, though, is for Frank Selke. The assistant manager Maple of the Maple Leafs isn't that bad, though. To There's just no space. his job title, they just put ass man in parentheses. Ass they said, man Frank, is crazy. Your ass will be spelled pretty fishy after you smuggle one through okay. security. That's... So that's exactly what Detroit Red Wings fans do before a playoff yeah, yeah, game. Yeah, they throw It's not just any fish. fish. It's an octopus. Once octopus, they've gotten into the arena, fish. which is a task in itself, they do something absolutely insane. Tonight has become a playoff tradition in Detroit to see an octopus thrown out onto the ice before every home game. But what does it all mean and when did this tradition act? Apparently, this has been a tradition since 1952 when the NHL played two best of seven series to win the Stanley Cup. So the eight two arms bad. for the octopus symbolize how many... A dude, piss off. Hey. So, going back to that, they yeah, played up to 14 visit. games blast. to win the Stanley Cup. Oh, get out of here. Now. That's crazy, no, dude. Isn't what it? is it? See no evil. <laughs> Speak no evil. Speak no evil. I don't care. The Minute made zero sugar marketing oh God, geniuses said you've got to have an ad. Our flavor geniuses said, "Huh? Shouldn't an amazing tasting zero sugar pink lemonade sell dude, itself?" Dude, I don't We care. tend to agree with the I flavor do geniuses. Not care. Great taste, zero sugar, sells itself. How many games it would okay. take for the Red Wings to win it all? What's even crazier is number 17, when an entire NHL I'm sorry, what was got happening destroyed. in that last video? In 2013, Alberta, where the Calgary Flames play, had record rainfall and caused the worst flood in Alberta's history. This caused the Bow and Elbow River to this completely one I might have overflow. Known, actually. The rivers are right next to the Scotia Bank Saddle Dome. The water flooded into the arena and completely sorry, hold flooded it. Scotia Bank? Scotia Bank? Bro, there's no shot you said Scotia Bank over 15 feet above the ice. Wow. The CEO That's of the crazy. Flames explained how bad it got. Um, the the tales of up to row uh, eight or nine are absolutely true. Uh, it sits at now about row eight. And uh, if you put that in perspective from the event level, that means that if you were a hockey player walking out on the tunnel onto the ice, you would be underwater yourself. Um, it is a total loss on the event level. Um, and to the degree that it is uh, greater than that, uh, we do not know. Obviously. That is crazy. The first game was scheduled for 69 days after the flood. A typical estimate would take six months to clean up a flood like this. With tens of millions invested into it, they were miraculously able to clean up the water in time for the season. And honestly, that stadium is pretty old. Maybe they should have just moved arenas? I think Dude, we're a little crazy. too old to have an imaginary friend. That is so Arizona crazy. Punch Imlac didn't think so, because he literally invented a fake player. It was the 1974 NHL draft. Some ja- the they made up a Japanese 11. player. They decided to use it on a Japanese to prodigy, Taro Sujimoto from the Tokyo Katanas. The only issue was, he didn't exist. Imlac had asked his directors of communications, Paul Weiland, to invent a realistic Asian player draft. As a college student, Weiland frequented a spot called Sujimoto's, so he called up the owner to see if he could use his last name, although he didn't tell him what for. He, he said, yeah, they wanted to know uh, what a, a Japanese boy's name was. So he said Taro was a was a real popular boy's name. And the rest was history. Imlac was fed up with the league's super slow draft process, so this was his way to protest. The league didn't even think twice about his pick and made it official immediately. Weeks later, they finally realized Taro wasn't a real player. The Katanas didn't exist. I mean, come on, Buffalo Sabres, Tokyo Katanas, see a resemblance? Now, Sujimoto <laughs> is a Buffalo legend. Diehard fans still show up the games wearing his jersey. Also, yeah, I, I bet you didn't know that the Stanley Cup does. is fake. Well. 
least when you view it publicly. There's one replica Stanley Cup for fans and one real I've Stanley Cup for the life. players to really hold cool. and celebrate with. The way to tell is to lift up all 35 pounds and look at the bottom. The real one has the Hockey Hall of Fame logo on the bottom. As time goes on, the cup has only gotten taller and taller as they engrave more names. For hockey, being tall doesn't really matter. At least not That's like so basketball. True. Though, it can't hurt to have a longer reach and stick length. The average height of an NHL player is 6'1", which to the NBA 6'6", is nothing. But have you ever wondered who the tallest NHL player of all time is? Chara, That's right? Sedeno Chara. Yeah, and his like seven foot stick. His size does matter. He's a Stanley Cup champion, seven-time All-Star, Norris Trophy winner, and even has the NHL record for the hardest slap shot. Oh, by the way, he's six foot nine. You don't want to see this guy mad at you on the ice. I'm not even sure the shot was beat. Oh, I might be wrong on that. Drops. Evander Kane. Evander Kane goes after Chara. Punches him while he's Dude, down. I can. I'm That's so happy Jack mistake. Edwards retired. The captain tempted to twist his head. Yeah, those linesmen better break the ball. That's so annoying. Nasty. Penguins on the other hand are pretty cute. And the Pittsburgh Penguins actually oh, had a real life one back in the 60s. Thus, Penguin, Penguin, Penguin Pete. Oh my God. Born. Fans absolutely adored Mr. Pete, and he was Dude, they had an actual penguin. That's sick. Season, a call, phone call came from out of the blue, from. At one time, would you, what would you feel if you saw like a penguin at a hockey student game? at University of Pittsburgh saying we should get a penguin, teach him how to skate, have the penguin lead the team onto the ice. Unfortunately, Pete was only able to make six games before he came down with a case of pneumonia. Sadly, Aww. Pete passed away shortly after. The Pens tried to replace him, but it didn't feel the same. And so the iceberg was born. In the early days of the NHL, uh, another movie tradition legend, was born. By the way. when a player scores a hat trick or three goals in one game, fans throw their hats onto the ice to celebrate. And it's all different kinds of hats. Even a cowboy <laughs> hat. <Look. laughs> people not know that the I think many fans wonder what happens to these hats after they're thrown. They get donated, well, each team they? is different. The Flyers have a specific display in the Wells Fargo Center full of hats that have been thrown during hat tricks. The Colorado That's Avalanche cool. donate every hat that hits the ice, along with 500 brand new ones to Denver Rescue Mission. And That's sometimes really cool. players get some new souvenirs. Career. Anyway, want to pick one out? There it goes. <laughs> they're looking for a hat. Maybe there's one he likes. This next player definitely needs to be digging out the, the players can just keep, He made only keep one if they dollar. Want Chris Draper was drafted by the Winnipeg Jets late in the second round. After training camp, the Jets decided they didn't want to use him, even though he performed very well. So That's they loaned crazy. him to a minor league for a few years. He played great, and the Red Wings took notice. They wanted to trade for him, but the Jets didn't even need anything for him. League rules stipulated that he had to be traded for something, so they traded him for a dollar. Um, And I think it was game that is crazy. five. I uh, I ended up scoring this. two goals and I was actually uh, first star of the game. And the next day, you know, I'm doing an interview with some of the Detroit media. And, and I remember doing the interview and one guy stuck around for a couple more questions. And he just kind of ended the interview. He goes, he goes, not bad for a kid traded for a dollar. And I just kind of, you know, I just kind of laughed, you know, and, and, I, and I was just like, hold on, what did he just say? And uh, so I actually kind of was like, excuse me, sir. Um, you know, you, you kind of said something about, uh, you know, one dollar. I. I don't understand what you mean by that. And he's like, he goes, you don't know. And I said, I, I don't know what. And he goes, he goes, you were traded for one dollar. Dude, imagine and actually be I traded for one dollar and okay, not know that's, that's, that's kind of so a, you know, a, a kick to the that's ego so right there. Draper went on to win four Stanley so Cup funny. titles and to be one of seven men who played more than a thousand games for the Red Wings, which might be the worst trade in history. The fastest mm, goal in history know, is tied three ways with three different players. Check it. Last Saturday in Boston and lost 4-3. This game underway. Bradley, Lehman, Anderson for the Maple Leafs. Of course, he's against the Leafs, too. Alex is one of them, but Doug Small and Brian John Trache also hold the title. Just five seconds. That's a bit longer than how long I last. No, I'd probably last longer than I, this girl. The only I, female I NHL beg your player part. Hold ever. on. Rion, I beg your finest pardon, dude. I beg your finest pardon. Barrel aged 107 year. Finest pardon?
lived and breathed hockey. She became the first girl to play in Quebec's international Pee Wee tournament and the first girl to play in the Quebec Major Junior Hockey League. What there weren't many it? options for girls to play hockey in the, the 1980s and 90s. Yeah, she had to compete against the boys if she wanted to play at all. She played so well that the Tampa Bay Lightning invited her to their training camp after she had helped Canada win gold at the 1992 Women's World Championships. Dude, just she played in one period of an exposition match of with so them and became guys. the first and still the only just woman crazy. to suit up for an NHL game. Uh, every time I think about it, that walk but that's my so cool. to the ice, like my heart was beating so fast and it, it was just uh, overwhelming because when I went to camp, I never thought I would play an exhibition game. So I had to perform in camp to get that, that to earn that exhibition really game. It. So uh, it was crazy. But the most amazing thing is when I stepped on the ice, like the butterfly went away and I was just playing a hockey game. Like I forgot that I was wearing an NHL jersey and I was a first time a woman played in an NHL game. I was just playing hockey and that's you know that was the love that Actually, I, had I don't even for know the this game. i don't even know her stats it, it was one of the most that. amazing moments that i always going to remember i wish i pretty remembered. happy for her now she helps out at the player development department with the kings i bet That's you know cool. that they keep the nhl pucks in the freezer but have you ever wondered why they do that well so a the hockey pucks puck is made of stay frozen and if you've and ever used a bouncy get ball soft. you know what happens when you drop that on the ground that's why the pucks are kept in the freezer every game so they don't get too right. bouncy they need to be between negative 10 and negative 6.7 degrees celsius before they're put into play they're even trans Dude, think about the rest to make sure they don't that up. That's crazy. No, I'm so Dude. glad you're checking out EQ Bank. Free withdrawals oh God, at any ATM this one. Hold in on. Canada. Hmm. Hold on. Just, just think one. of all the money you're paying in ATM okay, fees. Skipping after two ads. You get a bonus for referring a friend, don't you? Maybe. Do you have my email? I'll put the email. Dude, I think the hockey pucks are actually just I'm continuously just frozen. Combine, share something with you. Kind You've cool. always stood up for me. Always sacrificed for me. Anyways. After a puck has been used for more than two minutes, it gets replaced with a new frozen puck so that the consistency is guaranteed no matter what time a player gets in the game. So about 25 to 30 different pucks are used in every NHL game. You can trade pucks during a game, but can you also trade in an arena? The Toronto Maple Leafs and the Edmonton Oilers try to do just that. Harold Ballard, the owner of the Maple Leafs, was about to go broke. He was really desperate to make something work. So he approached the Edmonton Oilers owner, Pucklington, asking for $50 million in cash and to trade his arena. Toronto had a much bigger market than Edmonton. Edmonton, so Pocklington was totally in favor of this trade. He had been known to make risky trades in the past, like when he traded Wayne Gretzky. But at the last minute, Ballard backed Did out you know of the that deal Wayne with Gretzky no was actually almost a Leaf. But regardless of what I'll arena you the story. Uh, yeah, he almost was traded to the Leafs. Uh, I don't know why. I think the, the, the Edmonton pulled out or got a better deal with the Kings. But that's crazy to think about that. Gretzky, Gretzky could have been a Leaf. Playing, you gotta try to win the game. The so 1980 happy. Winnipeg Jets didn't seem to get the memo. They went winless for the most consecutive games of all time at 30. They won nine games, lost 57, and tied 14. Their winless streak included the entirety of November and most of December. On the other side, the 1992 Pittsburgh Penguins That's hold the record crazy. for most wins a at 17 straight. Only in seven games during the streak did the Penguins trail a game for a total of 101 to 29. Well, nowadays, they're only a shell of that. However, it also seems like a million dollars isn't a whole lot for an NHL player. But back in 1971, there wasn't a single player who had made a million dollars from the league Bobby until Orr. Bobby Orr. Or had just come off a season where he finished second in the league. That one I didn't know. I just saw the number. He was also Bobby coming Orr. off his fourth Norris Trophy, all on what was widely reported as earning just $35,000 a year. For reference, the average Canadian family income was $41,000. What a dream. Well, after that year, Orr signed a five-year deal that would pay him $200,000 a season, making him the first million dollar player. Once that deal was over, he more so than doubled crazy. his salary with the Chicago Blackhawks at $500,000 a year. Hell yeah, or get that bag. Well, Disney definitely gets their bag from theme parks and for ruining Star Wars. But like Star Wars in 1992, the NHL partnered with Disney to make a Dude, movie. Mighty they Ducks low expectations, Only putting in a $14 million budget, the film follows the Mighty Ducks, a losing peewee hockey team who are coached the championship glory Dude, by Mighty an Ducks, Indianapolis lawyer. Arguably it ended up being a surprise time. success because it grossed over $50 million. It made Disney and other investors want to put their money into hockey, and it drew a ton more viewers so to the good. NHL. And then a real team emerged, the Mighty Ducks. Now the Anaheim Ducks. Eventually they went from a Boo. Disney movie to Stanley Cup champions. Crazy Boo. story, huh? Mighty Ducks leagues is better. Numbers, I'll stand on but it's that. usually by team. The NHL made an exception with one of the greatest players of all time. Only huh? one. That's for the great Wayne Gretzky. He won four Stanley Cups, nine Hart yeah, trophies, okay, yeah. and an insane the 61 NHL records. So to honor him, the NHL officially retired Gretzky's number 99. Oh, so no team in the league can have a player with that number. Honestly, I think that actually helps them because now they won't be compared to him, which is an impossible task. It also seems impossible to That's play so an crazy. NHL. Is there actually no Wayne Gretzky? But, uh, his number 
99. He wanted to wear uh, nine for Gordie Howe, like Gordie Howe. Uh, but his coach, I believe when he got to Edmonton, maybe it was, yeah, I believe when he got to Edmonton, uh, wouldn't let him. So he wore 99. True story. He doubled it up because uh, somebody wouldn't let him wear nine, number nine because of Gordie Howe. Interesting, right? Really interesting how these stories work out. They've done it. The first NHL game was actually played at a prison. It was informal, but the Red Wings went up against the Marquette Branch prisoners. But it wasn't until decades later that an official game was played. The Heritage Classic. Held in Edmonton, this game saw the Montreal Canadiens face off against the Edmonton Oilers in freezing temperatures. I will temperatures. stand by this. Despite the chill, the event was a resounding success. I will stand on this. Outdoor games fans are just in cool. More outdoor events happened since. They're just, they're just cool. Hot. Being at an indoor game is already cold, so miss me with that. I do really want to see they a just goalie score cool. a goal. And I bet you didn't know this actually happens. Here's the first one to happen ever. So strong in clearing. Drops it. Here he goes. Bidding for one. Dude, I'm not even scoring a goal like that. He scores! Are you kidding me? How about some more? Crawford will go to the bench again. Rene will try it. Yeah, Rene yeah, yeah. going deep for the empty net. It is bouncing! Oh! <laughs> Dude, goalie goals are crazy. Oh, but they're in. like... Well, like, you might be... You might think that goalie goal is like, oh yeah, you just shoot it down the air. Dude, with all the 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 gear and all the like the stick, it's hard to shoot on. Like it the stick's awkward. You don't have the same grip. You have to like launch it. And it also has to be in a direct line and not take a funny bounce for it to go in. It's 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 impressive when goalies do that. Like that's why it's but it's so it's such a cool ahead. moment. Nabokov knocks it down and he'll try and score. You have getting Nabokov. He scores. It's such a cool moment though. He did it. You have getting Nabokov has scored. The Rodor controlling the net is empty. He throws it down. And he scores. It's also such an electric moment. Only 14 goalies have scored goals. But Martin Brodeur has actually scored three on his own. Damn. That is such a crazy... Sorry, can we go back to that last thumbnail? Well, thank you guys so much for watching. I will go to this one. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you have yet to subscribe, do so. Uh, if you want to see some more reactions like this, let me know. I think that's kind of... I don't know. There's some things in there I didn't know. Some things in there I did know. Some things that just are a little crazy. Uh, if you want to see me direct to anything, any other videos, hockey, sports, any sort of sports, uh, you can join my Discord and send them down below. Or send them join my Discord below. Uh, send them into I don't know, into a chat. Say react to it, and I will try to react to it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Enjoy your day. Uh, R.I.P. Johnny and Matthew Gaudreau. And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you. Peace.